South Korea's air and missile defense architecture is entering a decisive new phase as the long-range surface-to-air missile system, known domestically as LSAM, transitions from development into full-scale production. This shift marks more than a technical milestone. It represents a strategic turning point in how South Korea plans to protect its airspace, defend its population centers, and assert long-term autonomy in national defense amid a persistently unstable security environment on the Korean peninsula. For years, the primary driver behind South Korea's missile defense investments has been the evolving missile and nuclear threat from North Korea. Short-range ballistic missiles, maneuverable re-entry vehicles, and increasingly sophisticated launch tactics have forced Seoul to rethink the depth and resilience of its defensive layers. In response, South Korea has built a multi-tiered system known as the Korean Air and Missile Defense Framework, designed to intercept incoming threats at multiple altitudes and ranges. Within this structure, LSAM occupies the highest domestic interception layer, sitting above medium-range systems and forming the final shield before threats reach critical national assets. What makes the current moment particularly significant is that LSAM is no longer a theoretical or experimental capability. In recent months, South Korea formally signed production contracts with its domestic defense industry, authorizing the manufacture of operational interceptors, launchers, and associated radar systems. The scale of these contracts, valued at several hundred billion South Korean won, written out fully in national budget documents, confirms that the system has passed development validation and entered the deployment phase. For Korean audiences, this transition carries strong symbolic weight signaling that missile defense is no longer reliant solely on allied systems stationed on Korean soil. Technically, LSAM is designed to intercept both aircraft and ballistic missiles at high altitudes, with interception envelopes extending far beyond the reach of previous indigenous systems. The interceptor uses a hit-to-kill concept, relying on kinetic energy rather than explosive warheads to neutralize incoming threats. This approach demands extreme precision, high performance guidance and advanced propulsion, all of which have been focal points of South Korea's recent defense research investments. The successful validation of these technologies has elevated LSAM into the same operational category as the world's most advanced missile defense systems. For domestic viewers, comparisons to foreign systems arise naturally. LSAM is often described as a Korean counterpart to American high-altitude missile defense systems, but this framing only captures part of the picture. Unlike imported or allied systems, LSAM is designed from the outset to integrate seamlessly into South Korea's command, control and sensor networks. Its radars, battle management software and interceptors are optimized specifically for the geography of the Korean peninsula where warning times are short and launch distances are compressed. This localization gives South Korea greater control over response timelines and engagement rules, an issue that resonates deeply with audiences sensitive to sovereignty and national autonomy. Recent reporting has also highlighted that LSAM is not a static endpoint, but the foundation for future expansion. Development work is already underway on an enhanced follow-on variant, commonly referred to as LSAM-2. This next iteration is expected to significantly expand interception altitude and engagement range, pushing South Korea's defensive reach further into the upper atmosphere. To support this, domestic companies are developing next-generation ration multifunction radars capable of detecting and tracking faster, more complex targets at longer distances. For Korean viewers accustomed to seeing rapid technological iteration in civilian industries, this continuous upgrade path reinforces confidence in the sustainability of national defense programs. Beyond technical performance, LSAM carries important implications for deterrence. 
Missile defense does not eliminate threats, but it complicates adversary planning. By increasing uncertainty about the effectiveness of missile strikes, LSAM strengthens deterrence by denial, raising the potential costs of aggression. This logic is particularly relevant in a regional environment where North Korea has emphasized missile salvos and saturation tactics. A credible high-altitude interceptor layer forces any attacker to allocate more resources, reduce confidence in success, and reconsider escalation pathways. These strategic effects are often understated, but are well understood by Korean audiences closely following inter-Korean military dynamics. Another element contributing to public interest is the system's industrial dimension. LSAM is the product of sustained collaboration between government research agencies and private defense firms, reflecting South Korea's broader ambition to become a leading global defense exporter. While the system is currently focused on domestic deployment, officials have openly acknowledged that future export variants could be developed for partners facing similar missile threats. For Korean viewers, this aligns with a growing sense of national pride in the country's defense manufacturing capabilities, already demonstrated through successful exports of armored vehicles, artillery and aircraft. The timing of LSAM's production rollout also intersects with broader regional trends. Across Northeast Asia, missile defense is becoming an increasingly prominent feature of national security planning. Japan is expanding its own interception capabilities, while China continues to invest heavily in both offensive missile forces and counter-missile technologies. In this context, South Korea's ability to field a high-altitude interceptor of its own reduces strategic vulnerability and enhances its bargaining position within allied frameworks. This nuance resonates strongly with Korean audiences who value alliance cooperation but also emphasize independent capability. From an operational standpoint, LSAM's integration into the existing defense network will be gradual but deliberate. Initial deployments are expected to focus on protecting key metropolitan areas and strategic installations, including command centers and air bases. Over time, coverage will expand as additional units are fielded and supporting sensors come online. This phased approach reflects both budgetary realities and doctrinal caution, ensuring that crews are fully trained and systems are thoroughly tested under realistic conditions. For viewers, this measured rollout reinforces the perception of professionalism and reliability rather than rushed deployment. Public discussion in South Korea has also emphasized the defensive nature of LSAM. Unlike offensive missile programs, missile defense systems are widely perceived as stabilizing tools aimed at protecting civilian populations rather than projecting power abroad. This framing is particularly effective for domestic audiences as it connects national defense investment directly to public safety. By highlighting protection rather than escalation, LSAM enjoys broad political and societal support insulating it from the controversy that sometimes surrounds other strategic programs. In the near term, continued testing system integration exercises and incremental deployments will keep LSAM in the public eye. Each successful milestone reinforces confidence not only in the system itself, but in the broader direction of South Korea's defense policy. Ultimately, LSAM represents a convergence of technological maturity, strategic necessity, and industrial ambition. It strengthens South Korea's defensive posture at a time of heightened uncertainty, reduces dependence on external systems, and signals long-term commitment to self-reliance security. For Korean viewers, it is not simply another weapons program, but a tangible manifestation of how the nation adapts to evolving threats while maintaining control over its own defense destiny. If you want to follow how LSAM evolves, how it compares with regional counterparts, and how it reshapes missile defense thinking on the Korean peninsula, staying engaged with in-depth defense analysis channels 
will ensure you never miss the next critical development.